Hey guys, this is ReedFreak7, and welcome back to another Minecraft Redstone tutorial. So what we're going to be looking at today is this furnace array. It is a 225 furnace array with 9 rows of 25 furnaces. Each row outputs items at hopper speed, and also takes in items at hopper speed, and that is pretty much exact. So the timings on this are very tight, and they are pretty much perfect. If you want more information on how this system works, I will be showing you in the tutorial, but uh, Il Mango has a video going over this system, and I would recommend watching that. I'll leave a link to that in the description. So basically, I have chest boats that are positioned with their hitboxes over top of nine different hoppers. It's kind of hard to tell, but it is actually over these three hoppers and uh, I guess five hoppers. And so the items from that chest boat are getting split nine ways into the nine different furnace arrays. And once items have been smelted, they will be output by these droppers into the water stream and put into these nine chests at the bottom. I'm using nine chests because theoretically, if you run this thing for long enough, hoppers could start to fill up and you would need nine to be able to cope with the amount of items coming out of the system. Now, I will be showing you how to build this in modules because there's no point showing you how to build the same thing nine times. So I will be showing you how to build this and you can honestly just use this if you don't need more than 25 furnaces in an array because honestly, this is completely overkill and there is no reason you should ever need that many furnaces. But you know, sometimes you do redstone because it's cool. So that's why this video exists. So let's do a quick showcase. So I will crouch and right click on that chest boat and then I can load my fuel into the lower one. So it's hard to tell, but that is getting distributed evenly among all the rows. The rows may have different numbers uh, at this current time and that is just because it takes longer for items to reach the outer modules of the smelter. So while that's loading, I can start to load the items I want to smelt. So, yeah, let's just load it into the top chest. That's really all there is to say about this. And if you look down here, you'll see soon that one turns on. And then a bit after that, this row will turn on and so on until all of the rows are lit. There we go. All the rows are currently working. And then soon we should see items getting dispensed. Yep. And as all the rows start to uh, smelt, then we should start getting a lot of items flowing through this system, as we do now. And you'll see that this hopper is backing up very quickly, which is why I have nine, as I already explained. So I'm going to let this run until it has finished smelting. Well, the smelter has finished smelting. We've got a few furnaces that just haven't turned off yet. Uh, but that really isn't a problem. And if we take all the items out of these hoppers and chests, because I'm too lazy to wait for all the items to actually drain out of the hoppers, uh, we should see that I have exactly a single chest worth of items. Uh, I'm very confused. I've got more than a single chest worth of items. It's possible that there were still some items left in these chests. Uh, that's probably what it was, but yeah, it did smelt all of those items and output them into the chests. So now let's jump into the tutorial. So to build a row of this system, you're just going to start out by placing a chest. This is going to be our temporary output. Of course, you can change this out for dispensers if you want to build the whole system. And then we'll build 25 hoppers. So that's one, two, three, four, 5, 24, 25. Then on top of each of these hoppers, we're going to place a furnace. Out the back of each of these furnaces, we are going to place a hopper, as well as on top of each of these furnaces. So then, once you have those hoppers down, you're going to place another hopper on top of each of these facing into the hopper below. Now that we have those hoppers in, we are going to place a hopper facing up on each of these rows. I'm just going to do this one first and then place hoppers going into that hopper all the way to the back. 
So it may seem like we have an extra hopper in here, but I can assure you that this row of hoppers is actually necessary. So the reason we use this is because these hoppers here are going to have a redstone line that locks them, and that would mean if that redstone line was instead on this bottom hopper, an item would always be stuck in these hoppers not being used. And that's why we have this, because if items are getting stuck in these hoppers, unable to go into the furnace, then, well, whenever you start smelting again, you'll get a bunch of items from the previous batch of things you were trying to smelt, which isn't really ideal. So then, out of this back hopper, uh, on both the top and bottom row, we're going to place two blocks, like so, and then I need a comparator, which I don't have. Now that I have a comparator, we are going to place a comparator coming out of each of those hoppers and a repeater coming out of that comparator. Then we're going to place a block like that and a block here, and we'll start out with the top row. So first I'm going to build my blocks for the redstone line that is going to be locking hoppers, and just build that all the way along. And then on top of that, place redstone dust. Now I am going to take a block there and then staircase blocks up until I am one above this and then I'm going to build 10 blocks out 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 and then I'm going to place a redstone torch on that once I actually have one of them in my inventory and you can see that even the last one is powered whereas if I had this a block back the last one is not actually powered then on top of this, we are going to place redstone dust all the way to that point, so that will be powered by this repeater. Then here, we are going to place a block going up, like so, on both things, and we are going to build 10 blocks once we are in line with these hoppers. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 4 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, with a torch on the end, obviously. And we'll do the same thing down here for the row of redstone dust that is going to lock the hoppers. Then again, on top of this, place redstone dust. And on this one, though, we are going to place it until it's directly in front of that repeater. Then out front, we are just going to place an extra hopper. You don't really need this. I just like to do it. And then a chest uh, for your input. So then you can just test your system. So I'm going to put in 50 coal. I'm using 50 because that goes evenly into 25, and that just means I'll have the same amount of coal in each furnace. And we should see it drop down soon. Yep, there's one, and then after a bit we should get a second one. And there is two. Now I'm going to do the same thing for our uh, smeltable item. And you should see all of these furnaces turn on at roughly the same time. There we go. All of them turned on. And after a bit, we should see items coming into this chest at hopper speed. Until it's finished smelting. And there you go. They're coming in at hopper speed. And there we go. We've got our 50 coal. So that is how you build each module. And of course, if you are going to build the entire thing you are going to replace each chest with a downwards facing dropper. That is not downwards facing. There we go. Downwards facing dropper. So uh, to do the entire furnace tutorial, I'm just going to duplicate this thing with structure blocks as I have it uh, saved on this guy. But it is entirely possible, obviously, to just build nine of them in survival if that is what you want to do. So now I have spawned in nine rows of this furnace array. So this one has a simple auto dropper circuit here. All it is is a comparator coming out of the dispenser with a repeater on the end and redstone dust coming along and powering both the comparator which is in subtract mode that is important and the dropper itself and that will create a clock as you can see if I throw some items in there. Now we're gonna build some water streams. So go down a block away from the dropper, build out two blocks, and then on both sides you're going to build all the way to the other end uh, to the last dropper right there. And two blocks there as well, and back to the other end.
Once you've got that, we're going to place in some glass borders just so items don't flow off the sides. So one glass border here in the middle. Then we're also going to have a glass border here on both sides and then between each auto dropper circuit. And then again on the end right here. I did forget to mention the spacing. I'd leave a block in between each one just so redstone doesn't interfere. There may be ways to get around that interference, but uh, I don't think so just because this torch has to be here and that would always link and that would cause massive issues. So then at the bottom here, we were going to take some chests and build out a block. I always do two double chests just to make sure that items get properly aligned before they continue down this row. Then for the rest of the row, I'm just gonna use fences. You could use glass panes or a bunch of other different items. I'm just gonna use fences though. And then we'll build those down the rest of the row. The idea here though is this block has to be something that's not a full block. It has to have a smaller hitbox on the chest just to make sure that items can run along this entire row without getting stopped by something. Uh, they cannot just be more chests though, as uh, hoppers which with a chest under them cannot actually pick up any items. So then under the first nine fences, we're just going to place a hopper facing down. And then under each, each of those, I'm going to do a double chest. You could uh, obviously add way more storage if you need it. So now comes the fun part, uh, which is the loading system. So you're going to go to your center array. And then we're going to build the fueling system first, as this is going to be the lowest uh, point. So for the center of your array, you're going to take the fuel line, uh, which is the lower one, and build out two blocks. We do two blocks just to make sure that no hoppers are getting powered by these redstone dust. I did have that problem in a previous version of the smelter, and obviously that's a pretty big issue. Then I'm going to build up two hoppers, and that is going to be where my chest boat will eventually be sitting. So that's going to be uh, one of my 9x9. Nine nine. I said 9x9. Nine nine. I meant 3x3. Three three. Sorry. Then out of this guy, we're going to build out two blocks, uh, actually three blocks, sorry, and then build till we are in line with this hopper line, and then build up two more. That will be the center of our 3x3. Three and then on this array to the right of the center, we're going to build out four hoppers and then build till we're in line and again, build up two. Then we're gonna come to this line here and for these guys, I am going to bring them out like uh, that to in line with the first hopper, build it up two and then I'm going to bring it across. And I think you can see the gist of it by now, but I'll show the rest on camera in case you are confused. So now I have got all of the hoppers going to the nine by or three by three. Goodness, I keep messing that one up going to the 3x3 area where the chest boat will be sitting. To align the chest boat, I'm just going to place three fences like that, and then a mangrove chest boat in the center, roughly. Then I'm going to drive the chest boat into those three fences, and that will position it over top of all of the hoppers, so that its hitbox is at least over top of part of each hopper, and that way each hopper will be able to suck items out of it. So that's it for the fuel system. Now let's add in the system where you can load all of the items. So for the loading system, you're gonna start at the center again and build up one, two, three, four blocks. At the fourth block, I'm just going to mark out a little cross where the chest boat will eventually be centered. Then for this guy, I'm going to build up two blocks, bring it back a block, bring it underneath, and then build up another two blocks. The reason I'm going underneath like that is so that other lines can run a block above it to the outside. And then I'm going to do the same thing for this guy here. So for the outer rows of this system, you're going to build up four blocks and then come towards the central point. Uh, 
and then for these guys obviously the same thing and then just build out however many blocks in that direction you need to go so now i've got all of those built and i am going to center my chest boat in the same way i did before so that should be it for the furnace system i'm just going to do a quick test to verify that everything works uh so your system will not have any fuel in it mine did just because my saved furnace array had a little bit of fuel in it already uh but i'm going to load some fuel just to verify that it works still and yes we are getting fuel into the system looking good so now let's add some smeltable light and we should see the same thing as when i showcased at the beginning yep that one turns on that one turns on that one turns on that one turns on and that one turns on awesome and all of them should be on perfect and we are starting to get items coming out oh I'm an idiot. I forgot to show you how to do the water streams. So there... <laughs> I'm such an idiot. Goodness. So for the water streams, you're just going to want water and bucket... Or buttons, not buckets. So I'm going to start off by placing a water bucket here with a button behind. And that is going to take it that way. I'm going to place a button here with a water bucket there. And then a button here, water bucket there. And just continue this for a while then on the front you're just going to go to the extent of the water's range because there's no reason not to there i just have it so there's not a dead spot directly under any of the droppers because that would be an issue so uh, let's see if we got everything as you can see we got all nine stacks of coal back so that's it for this tutorial i hope you have enjoyed and i hope you found this useful uh I would not really recommend building this in survival unless you have a massive project that you need a ton of items smelted for. Uh, but other than that, you probably don't need a system like this. Something like just the single array over here would probably do just fine for almost every circumstance. But anyways, thank you all for watching. Please leave a like and consider subscribing, and I'll see you all next time. Goodbye.